Well, what do we have here? This is a 2002, I believe, or 2001. Then now this was a factory Sunfire, I believe, with the 2.2. This is the motor I absolutely love in these cars, is these 2.2s. And the reason for that is these are unkillable, unkillable motors. You could run them without water for, I did 45 minutes and the car ran better than it ever did. Um, this was my brother's car from Barry for 2006. But now being here in 2007, this car needed work. And my brother is in a different, uh, different situation than we was last year. He no longer has time or money for this sport. So he's told me just to get rid of the car. And this is a shame because this was a very well built two door Sunfire. Never let us down, started up every time. Back end kind of went down just a bit, but if you take a look, the frame actually folded up. So that's coming in beautifully. That's how I love these back ends to go because they start getting very, very packed in there. I do have a gas tank protector in it. Gas tank protector is into the rear floor is what you want. But the problem is, is that he blew the clutch out of this. Now he prefers five speed cars. I don't mind five speed cars. I, uh, I find some tracks are better for automatic and some tracks are better for manual. I find the smaller ones are obviously better for manual. But uh, this big, uh, the big track that he brought this to, he missed a couple shifts, missed reverse a couple times, dumped it into fourth, that kind of thing. And he ended up taking the clutch out of it. So it comes down to the choice where I bought the car back off my brother because this way here, I get my bumper, I get my fuel cables, my battery cable, all that fun stuff. Not only that, but I also get my coil packs because I've actually lent out my coil packs and don't have them back. I get an alternator, I get a starter. I get basically a full running 2.2 and a rad as well because it isn't actually damaged. But like, my question is, is I could run this car with very little work. I believe a clutch for this off Rock Auto, just the pressure plate, sorry, just the friction disc is like 56 bucks. It's not a really expensive fix, but it's the time, the effort, and the energy to replace that. You basically have to take everything apart. Now, a lot of you guys are going to tell me it's not that hard to take that apart and do that. And I understand, but my thing is, it's a derby car. Are you really going to want to put $56 into a clutch in a car that's pre-ran? to run it again and you know what if you take a look the frame rails have kind of kinked just a bit and they're starting to go towards driver on that side starting to go towards passenger a bit on this one very hard to tell but they are so it's a very good car still but is it worth the effort and in my eyes it's not you know what, if it was an easy job, like a serpentine belt and the part was $56 or something like that, then you know what, I might do it because, you know what, I probably would do it and I have done it in the past because a serpentine belt, yes, it costs you money, but the energy is not there. It takes 10 minutes to install a new belt when you're three hours to install a new uh, clutch. So sometimes when it comes right down to it, you have to figure out, is it worth it to replace the part? Usually if the part, uh, depending on how much I paid for the car, if I can buy a part for under 50 bucks, usually that's pretty good. If I can buy a part to keep the car going for another derby, it's cheaper than buying a car. But when I got to put six or seven hours labor into changing the whole clutch, when it only takes me five hours to build a whole new car, including cage, gut it, run the cables, the battery, all that fun stuff, then you know what, I might as well buy a new car. Make sure what you want to do to the car is equal to the enjoyment you're going to get out of it. Because this one here obviously needs more work than what it's worth. For example, this Accord wagon that I ran in Barry last year, yes it's beaten, yes it's bruised and it looks like crap, but the only part it needs to run and drive is a brake master. Which realistically, that's $20 at a scrapyard or it's really easy to pull off another Accord that I get. So this car here might be worth it for me to keep and save and I've obviously saved it for a year. So you know what, the brake piece that it's gonna cost me, yes, it might cost me 30 or 40 bucks, but it is honestly two bolts to attach it to the booster and two brake lines to put into it and it's installed. So that way there, it is ready to go. It is a quick, easy, cheap fix. That is why I'm keeping this car. Now this Mazda, Basically, nothing has broken to the point where it's going to cost me any money. This car here is just basically a beat and broken and bruised car. Obviously, the back of the car is pretty much damn gone. But 
All that's wrong with it is a bent strut and a bent tie rod. I can fix that strut by hooking a, uh, rat, a winch cable around it and pulling it straight and just putting the trailer up against it. And then the tie rod, you guys already seen me fix. So this right here has cost me nothing and it's only taken me, I think it was 30 minutes to fix the tie rod and we're good for another round. So what I'm trying to basically say is weigh your pros and cons to a car. If a car is going to cost you too much to fix, don't fix it. Enjoy the hobby, don't go broke doing the hobby. But that's just my two cents on these cars, and, and I do a lot of cars. I know when to call them, that's for sure. But this old girl's off to the scrapyard, that's for sure. Thanks for watching Zach's Workshop. Take care, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to hit that like button down below, and feel free to leave a comment as well.